can start. Okay, so we can we can start now. Can I start? Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, I've been following you closely. <laughs> you played a lot of games during the last day. I don't know tomorrow and yesterday. I kept a lot of rapid games. Ten minutes finish. <laughs> um, I chose three of your games because they are thematically connected. Um, not going to say what the theme is, as always, but I guess you're going to get an idea of what was what that get that went wrong in this game. <laughs> um, the first one is the game Jose. Dot. They're all rapid games, so uh, we have to take the analysis with a pinch of salt. I mean, not possible to play perfectly, uh, and not even at the, at the usual. Uh, long game level, you are playing a uh, 10 finish game. It, the, this, but it's bound to be, to be really with a lot of takes. Mm -hmm. Perfectly normal. But I wanted to focus not so much on the tactical aspect of this game because well, hanging pieces and overlooking stuff is inevitable, uh, but on some positional mistakes that I noticed. Um, well, you were white right on this one. It was b4, b5, f3, c6, bishop b5, a6. Well, I will open. Very main line at this point. <laughs> this c uh, Well, I noticed that in some games you played h3 here. And you corrected that. I'm very proud of you. Yeah. By the way. Uh, yeah. Um... I, I definitely have that corrected now. The reason is I played a tournament game. I think it was in the last tournament I played. And I played h3 before c3 um, because I'm that pin in the in you know in the Royal Lopez, I'm always that pin's always a pain in the ass to <laughs> to deal with. Yeah. But <laughs> I I I now correctly adjusted this as you said, because even though this pin is is annoying. Um, I believe that knight a5 is even more annoying. Um, and so that's how I remember it now. Instead of knight a5, uh, c3 first to, to, um, before h3, and then we can play h3 after. Yeah, uh, the Spanish bishop, bishop is just you. You can't let him just exchange it for a knight so yeah. early on. Yeah. Uh, after c3, bishop c2, uh, I know it seems like this bishop on c2 is not doing much, but after the position opens in the center, after you play d4, and your d pound and your c pound are exchanged, your bishop is doing a lot. I mean, on c2 it's already doing it's already doing a lot by defending this pound, but when the position opens up, the bishop is a very strong piece, so you should keep it for later. Um, yeah, c3 is the move here now. Uh, castle h3. We are very much in the main line at this point. Well, 95 is the chi going. Uh, there are other ways to continue here with black. Uh, when he plays 95, he's choosing one type of strategy against your center. You're going to play d4 at some point. It's clear because one of the things you have going on for you in the Spanish is that you have that like base advantage in the center and um, you have to do something about it and you have to hit on d4 or on this pound here on d4 because that is a bit uh, for example knight d8 looks funny but perfectly valid system it's been played by carlson quite frequently uh this is the the briar yeah the briar and uh, he's going to go knight d7 Bishop b7, and this time his strategy is to put pressure on this pawn. So why just doesn't get to shuffle his pieces to the king side as easily as always? And at some point, even play d5. Um, there are different approaches. Knight a5 is the chivalry, and well, black is trying to get something going on the king side very quickly, and also to put pressure not on not so much on this four pawn, but on d4. Uh, here you play bishop c2, 
because we find C5 before the C7, we can use it on E5 and making some room for, some room for the loop to come to and yeah, and I'm I'm glad that you actually brought this game up because earlier today, it was either earlier today or yesterday, I actually, um, because I remember this and I remember not knowing theory beyond Queen C7, even though wow. I think even though I think Queen C7 is the main line, and so I I studied this and also ran Stockfish for like five hours, and <laughs> yeah, so there's. There's, uh, there's basically two top moves here. And I was, um, I decided on one of them, but I, it, I'm interested to hear your, your, um, analysis on the two different moves. So if I remember correctly, the two moves here are D5 and Knight BD2. Yeah, in fact, I did some analysis of what well, I don't play E4, mm. so I was trying to figure out what was the reason behind all of these moves. <laughs> uh, well, precision is not the only move. There are different approaches here. Um, of course, the first thing is to take on E5, so we have to do something about it. Um, well, with the idea of putting pressure on the center, uh, he can also go E takes D, C takes D. And here, Knight D7 is kind of a popular move out there at this point. Uh, Black is intending to play bishop f6, knight c6, and start keeping this pawn very hard. If you go d5, then okay, c6 is going to have this diagonal for himself, and uh, this turn uh, 5. Uh, it's not the only approach, c takes d4, also very possible here, uh, takes d4. I think knight c6 is the idea. This knight can be a problem. It can be an asset with, uh, for an attack on the queen side, or it can be a problem if it gets out of play. Uh, there are many card pop games in which he kind of got this knight to be a very miserable piece. Uh, he always knew how to do it. Um, so black has to be careful with it. Uh, queen c7 is by far the most, the most popular, I think. Um, here you take a4. Just kind of helping him with what he wants. He's trying to get something going on the queen side, and he's trying to get something for this knight on a5. And maybe it's just too premature to start opening up everything there. Um, and you were right, knight bd2 and d5 are the most uh, are the most important alternatives. Uh, d5 is very principled. I mean, you're trying to play directly against this knight five. As I said, it can be very miserable. Uh, you're trying, you usually try to use this knight on c6. I'm sorry, that arrow went very wrong. <laughs> um, you usually want to play knight c6 to keep on the pawn on b4. But now this knight can go back. And it's quite a problem for black. If this knight doesn't find a job, just as soon as possible, he might have a lot of trouble. Then you can start going about your your usual disciplines so of knight bd2, knight one, three, and the usual shuffling of white pieces uh, towards the king side. Meanwhile, this knight can be uh, So d5 is, is quite correct. Black has to do something about it. Uh, his next moves are primarily directed to create something, creating something on the queen side and finding this knight and it. And knight c4 is, for example, very good move. I mean, uh, if white just keeps it back, it gets to a better square and now it has the possibility of playing a5, a4. Well, this is a piece doing something, or maybe a5 followed by c4, and he's trying to open some lines uh, just keep, to keep the white honest. I mean, he, he doesn't want white to have a free hand, uh, just stuck on the king side as he usually does. Uh, b5 seems perfectly okay. This would be seven is another very reasonable. Uh, the usual 
uh, impulse is to play to b7. Uh, the bishop is sliding on granite right here. It doesn't make sense in this pawn is a rock, and this bishop has nothing to do on b7. Uh, it's much better off controlling uh, the h3, c8 diagonal, and, and maybe it can be put to some use in the, on the queen side. Um, now, B3 is kind of a thematic reaction, especially uh, you play white in these positions. I mean, you play the Sicilian as black, as, so you are going to play this mainly with white. Uh, B3 is again directly directed uh, against this knight. Uh, knight B7, knight BD2, uh, probably C4 is even better. Um, well, this knight is again very, very problematic piece for black. Uh, there are some plans of knight e8, knight e8, g6, very slow regrouping. This knight on e8 goes to c7, then f6, knight f7, and well, you can see how time you miss that. <laughs> uh, but it usually happens, believe it or not. It, it's a way to reach the position when this knight has nothing to do. That was white is clearly a pair you have advantages. You can go about your business bringing your pieces and your country slightly better. D5 has a problem that, well, it releases tension very early, so black um, doesn't need to worry about this pawns anymore, and he doesn't need to worry about this square on D5. That's, that's uh, if you will, the drawback of d5. That's uh, a very, very reasonable move. Maybe two is the other option that the tension is be fine. And here, usually black takes so that he can get something going on this file and he can go to with the knight to c6 and then he's going to have d4 for the knight. He takes the C6. This is a very common variation. Also, I think Knight B D2 is what I ended up choosing for my repertoire. Um, I think it was very close between the two moves, but I think just because it was, a, it's a lot more popular in main line. I thought it's very tried, tested, and true. So I just kind of get, ended up ended up going with that. Yeah, it's by far the most played alternative. I think B5 was second in order of popularity, but but Knight really two is the main move by far. It's the most lets you um well the elite and the best players in the world what they usually play uh one the most lets you choice. And mm. uh, D5 might run into some uh there might be antidotes at very high level, so they want to keep things mm -hmm. as tense as possible as white. Knight <laughs> um, b3 is the usual move here, well, there was trends and control of before. a5, and well, like pushing as far as he can on the queen side, he wants to play a4, b3, bishop d3, a4, knight d2, and it's quite a tense game. A very Spanish game. I mean, you you do have the usual uh, slight space advantage if you get him to exchange pounds on d4. Then you're going to have uh, uh, the little center. <laughs> uh, it it will be a position of triumph. At this point, uh, black is not is not forced to take or anything like that. Uh, but you keep you keep the tension and you keep a slight space advantage. And that that also got something going on the queen side, which is fine. Yeah, this must be close to to a balanced game, but it's a very Spanish game in that in that respect. You you really want to keep this pawn on d4 and e4, and that needs to create some kind of counterplay on the queen side so that it doesn't just get uh, slightly uncomfortable and and more um, limited position. This 
Um, well, th those two are the, the most the most recent good options, I guess. A4 is not that bad. I mean, it's kind of traumatic too. Maybe it's it's a bit early to say like this. I think the opponent didn't react to that way. Rook B8 runs into into move that that you didn't see in this game, in the game, or you didn't play for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think you can play here? Hmm, I'm not seeing anything yet. This night on this on this five is Tactical you might. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I didn't I didn't hear you there. Uh, um, this night on A5 is a tactical win. So, so to play Rook B8, this night is, is uh, slightly undefended. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I don't know. I, um, I'm not really seeing a way to exploit it. Um, I guess, um, I mean, there's, there's B4, but I don't really see, I mean, black, yeah, black, could, yeah, black could just go knight C4. Um, I mean, the most obvious move, of course, is A takes B5, but I don't see what, that is achieving for I don't see the follow up for white there. Well, if he takes with a pawn, um, the knight on a five is a bit on the air. <laughs> uh, this queen is kind of overloaded. I mean, he's the only one defending that knight. Um, he's also doing some heavy work here. Uh, Oh, okay, 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 I got it. I, once yeah. you, yeah, once overloaded was the key word there. Okay, so uh, um, I'm, 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 I'm looking at A takes B5, and then after, well, he could take with the rook, but let's just assume he takes with the pawn. Then I can take on E5, because if he recaptures, now the queen is overloaded on E5 and A5. Yeah, you're, you're a pawn. But, <laughs> but yeah. um, A5 rook takes b5 yeah that's, that's kind of a point he can take with the rook but it's not desirable for him to take with the rook i mean this pawn is going to be weak in the long run and this knight is still in a little bit of trouble um if he could capture with the pawn then maybe a takes b5 it doesn't have that great an effect but his pawn structure is really worse at this point and um, you have this rook, this open file, this pawn. Uh, I mean, it's it's defended at this point. He's not going to lose it in the short run. Uh, but in the long run, he's going to have issues with it. It's not a big advantage to white, but it's a uh, black shouldn't need to take with the rook here and just be um, left with. White and inferior pawn structure. I mean, you can continue normally here, I guess. Uh, and take two, and you're going to be red. Uh, this rook on b5 is still funny, also. And this knight on a5. Uh, but black pieces are not well coordinated on the whole. Um, so it takes a5 was quite strong just because it can uh, keep the, the pawn unit. <laughs> Uh, he needs to. He really needs to 
to cut them in a straight line. If he's going to to cut this pound on a60, he's looking for trouble in the long run. Um, well, you play like this too, which is fine, but uh, it lets the opportunity to be. Uh, well, now he played before, he corrected, <laughs> corrected his mistake. And now you went for knight d3. Uh, maybe you had to play knight f1 because this knight is his problem. <laughs> and if he, he usually struggles with his knight on a5, he has to find a job for him. And with knight d3, you are kind of getting, letting him get rid of his problem with, well, with no cost at all. <laughs> he is getting it for free. Um, for example, if knight f1, he could continue just like in the game, uh, b3, this would be 1c4, and your bishop is out of play, your rook is also out of play, but now this knight is kind of out of play. He could take it to c6, but it's still not doing it. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was terrified of this. I thought the rook on a1 is just completely dead. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> Uh, but the way you play it with knight d3 it's even worse because after knight d3 bishop takes c4. Oh yeah, same. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now he doesn't yeah. have this knight to worry about. Um, yeah. To play well here, he, he went for a5, and yeah, he's better here. If you, if you don't get this piece out, this is how you are going to get it out in the long, in the next move. Uh, this rook is also out of play, and you have it. So, you're in the wrong here. Uh, but the next move is the. I guess. Um, I guess I wanted to see this game for the next. <laughs> uh, only because of. You played d5. How do you feel about d5 now? And why? <laughs> well, yeah, I had mixed feelings here. I know that it's, it is. Um, we're. Um, relieving the tension or releasing the tension here. Um, but I think my thought process was I liked, I kind of wanted to lock down the the queen side and the center. And I thought his bishop is not so good, his dark sword bishop. And my plan was to lock it down and then um, try to come in, you know, for some attack um, and actually break down with a pawn break of f4 and then have these two bishops controlling. Um, that was, I was just kind of trying to lock things down before I went in for my attack. Yeah. Thing is, after you release tension, then you're not putting enough pressure, you're not exactly applying enough pressure uh, on e5. So basically, you need black to take e4 <laughs> if you want this bishop. To be released. Um, after you play this card, it's very difficult to to make black actually exchange this pawn. What maybe you want to to make that bishop leave the game. Uh, alternatively, you might want to play a four, but without uh, playing this five, so that you really really provoke him to <laughs> to eliminate here. Uh, bishop e three was the worst here. Knight d2, and you're going for f4 here. And maybe even knight f3 after that, and then you're really applying some strong pressure against this pawn. Um, once you get him to take e takes d, bishop takes d, well, at least this bishop is, is bound to be to be free at any point now. And this rook is also going to be alive, and you really, really need this. Uh, after you release the tension, this bishop on b1 is basically <laughs> dead and buried. Um, the problem now is that without these pieces, it's very unlikely that you're going to launch any kind of attack. I mean, things like knight h5 are, are well, Wishful thinking, I guess. <laughs> he can go h6 and have to go back. Uh, 
it's not going to happen for you if you have all these species locked down on the queen side. Uh, it's true that it's not easy to it's not easy to bring the point home. My mission is very close. Uh, I'd like it's getting a free hand here to do whatever he pleases, as long as he doesn't break on F5, which he did in the game. Uh, so, uh, well, I was, um, so you, you mentioned that, um, when I play D5, I'm, you know, I'm releasing the tension and you say that now the bishop on B1 is really locked in, but I'm, yeah. I, I'm just curious how, if I don't take, how, how does this bishop improve with, like, what's yeah, the, you need to, to, to apply pressure on E5 until it cracks, basically. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't crack. He's going to need to put all his defensive efforts in just sustaining this pawn here. And, well, that is going to make fast too. Uh, I mean, I don't even think he can, he can just uh, strengthen e5 and get away with it. Uh, for example, bishop e3, just to, bishop e3, just to go with the knight to d2 uh, and hmm. don't get the people locked Rook e8, what looks reasonable. Not the only move, but I do my one play. Knight b2. This is just to illustrate the general plan for, for white. Bishop b7, f4. Um, at some point, you can even think of taking everything on e5, playing knight f3, maybe bishop b4, e5, and get out of here. <laughs> of course, he can try to to just keep on the other. You're making some progress here. I mean, he has to go back with the pieces. It's not going to be easy for him to uh, to just keep the position close. I mean, F6 very very ugly move. <laughs> uh, the thing is, you keep the pressure here so that at some point uh, you provoke him to take either before or on the floor. After you play this file, that's not even a possibility anymore. And that's that's the whole point. I mean, after the fight, he gets a free hand just to start uh, shuffling his pieces around. And, and it's very unlikely that you're going to mount enough pressure against this pawn on e5 if you don't have this pawn on e5. <laughs> that's the whole point. Um, for example, he now went astray very fast. He played knight e8, which can't understand. Well, uh, he clearly was trying to to break. Yeah, f5, f5, I think. Yeah, yeah. Completely ignoring that your problem is this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he gave you a hand there. Uh, knight b7 looked reasonable. I mean, he's going to go knight 5 or knight 6 probably. And uh, bishop b7, and he's already threatening to to this file. I don't know, it looks dangerous enough. I mean, he's going to, like, to some extent, to liberate this rook. Even if he, his rook starts doing something, it's a whole pound, and uh, his pawns are quite advanced. This pawn starts advancing too, it's really very dangerous. Uh, for example, now Queen E2, just to start putting some pressure on this. Knight B6, Bishop B3, Bishop B7, and if you want to keep your pawn alive, you go for B6, and you get rid of that Bishop. And it's not looking, it's not looking good for White. It's still a long way from breaking into White's position. Black. Uh, Still has work to do, but has a time, <laughs> um, and you can do anything. But you can do nothing about this. This piece is and it, it's quite alarming. Black can even think about building up uh, pressure on the king side very slowly, even bringing this king to the king side, and then with mm. rooks on the king side, try to push these two pounds. Never, never, never playing a five. <laughs> uh, he sort of can't play around the pieces because he can do nothing about this too. Um, 
and you're completely tied up. Yeah, I, I didn't like this. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> like this. So, uh, 98, uh, the position is quite close, so he can get away with it. And he lost the tempo, but it's not a good one. And 98, 2, just have to, to look for the usual path for this night on this variation. Actually, um, um, I played Knight H2 with the prime idea of, of F4. Ah, you're, you're aiming for F4 right now. Yeah. Well, that's better. And that's I know, I know that doing. we had the lesson before on sometimes I play that a little too freely, but I thought here it was, I thought it was really necessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's time to go for it. <laughs> you, can, you can do without it. Uh, and now to play a file, which I think is the worst position mistake in this game. Uh, he lets you solve all your problems and even gives you some slight position of pressure. I didn't really understand uh, why he will let you free this, <laughs> this pieces. Uh, I mean, it's a common risk. You, he wants to have semi-open a file for his rook. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're getting a lot, a lot for it. Uh, you went for F4, uh, which I think is tactically inconsistent. It doesn't work, but you could play it with except 5 here, solving your main issue. <laughs> I don't know what, what do you think about this decision? Yeah, I mean, that was my second choice. It was a close call. Um, I, it was, it was really close. I just thought, um, in this position, I wasn't quite sure of my follow-up and I thought I was, I kind of liked, I played F4 cause I thought I would open up more lines, which I thought might be helpful for me, especially if I could get the, the E5 pawn off. I thought my Rook was nicely situated on this file. I just I was trying to open up both files at the same time. Well, you achieved a lot here. I mean, this is a typical situation in, in very in a lot of variations. In the King's Indian, it's quite common that Black plays f5 and White takes here, and this is a situation where Black invades this semi-open f5, and you have this great square on e4. Your knight should be there. <laughs> uh, you could bet for that uh, for that square in English with knight f1. I mean, after knight g3 hitting the rook, you get here with uh, with tempo. You're looking you're looking very good here. Uh, Black's move is also a mistake because he uh, traded his light square bishop. This I mean, he was very important um, i know he's not having trouble immediately on the light squares but he's going to <laughs> uh the central pounds on or iron dark squares and he parted with with his most important bishop you're you're better here at this point uh the e4 square i guess is a lot more important than than this open file which he can't use at this point uh, he has to get all his pieces out of the way, and it's not easy to achieve. And you're getting with the knight to to be uh, to reform very quick. Uh, things turn turn around very quickly after he played the fight. Yeah. Uh, effort could work, but it's completely dependent on, on tactics, and I think it does quite work here. Um, he played. He takes a four. Uh, I guess this one hmm? was correct. No. He should have he should have probably taken on on e4 because now this pawn is is threatened. So if you take bishop takes e4 now, he just gets three pawns. Mm -hmm. And if you take on e5, then this knight is going to be. Oh yeah, and that the pawn on d5 is super weak. Yeah, and it's. Very well located. This knight now it went from miserable to huge. This knight is <laughs> is a beast. 
And your bishop is uncomfortable. I mean, uh, you had it on B1, you wanted to bring him out, and now he's, he's hit by his knight. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, like he's doing fine here. He took the other way. He went for it, takes f4. Bishop takes f takes f4. Bishop g3, uh, where it takes bishop out from this guy. I don't know how, how this works. But if you went for bishop e 3 the problem is that maybe you are for back. So, well, now you pass it with your light square bishop. Uh, look quite dangerous. Bishop f5, rook e1, bishop f6, and he's, he's doing very well here in those bishops to really scary. Knight f3, rook a8, or very reasonable. And now he played bishop, oh no, rook takes e1, I'm sorry, bishop takes e1, and now he went for bishop takes e4. What do you think about? Bishop takes knight here. Um, well, I was pretty happy with it. Um, I know that my knight is actually pretty good. Um, we, you know, we're attacking his bishop and we have an outpost, two outposts. Um, so my knight is pretty good, or even another outpost here. Um, but I thought that, you know, he's giving up his bishop pair, and I thought I've got to be. I don't know. I felt, I felt pretty happy with that. <coughs> yeah, uh, you're, you're off the hook after Bishop D4, basically. Uh, he's, he's doing away with his Bishop. I mean, Bishop D5 was, was more in the spirit of keeping the despair of Bishop. If he, if you if he's going to change one of the Bishops for this night has to be this one because well he avoids the opposite color bishops and this bishop is arguably a lot better than this one. Um, for example after knight takes a five, rook takes a five, uh, he is he's a lot better. I mean mm -hmm. it's a matter of taking a look at at the activity of the pieces and there's a huge difference. Uh, you might not exchange this knight immediately, but then this pawn is going to suffer too, and um, bishop d3 is going to come soon, but in rook 1, and uh, this is not easy to hold for, for white. Uh, bishop takes d4, it's a shame to pop the, the bishop like this, especially when now they are opposite color bishops over the board. But, uh, it ended with a uh, with a blunder, but here it's so weird. So I don't know, Bishop G three followed by Rook E one and nothing but nothing bad should happen to to any of you. <laughs> um, after King F two, Queen E seven and you're in kind of trouble now King takes E four, Queen E three. Yeah. And now now he's yeah, he's going for I, I made that move just too quick. Yeah, you still have some time here. Yeah. So you, yeah, yeah. But well, all in all, I wanted to show you this game because the critical moment for me is here, 93. Uh, after this, you got a couple of, uh, of pieces that were not going to move for a very long time. And then D5 was the other, the other mistake, if you will. Um, releasing tension and then making your two pieces really bad. It, it happens. I mean, uh, stranded pieces, pieces out of play are a huge, huge part of strategy. Um, and it's something you have to go uh, aware of and be careful about and you can also go to your advantage and you did you did it for good part of this game can just watch out if for this 
5 minus 3 minus 6. I don't know if you remember this one. It was kind of a false Richter Rouser. <laughs> uh, he, he played with 6. He forced a Richter, Richter Rouser structure with lost tempo with that eight feet. Which makes sense. You took g4, bishop g7, and now you play knight f5, which I really like. I think it's a very strong move. It, it makes this bishop look really silly. <laughs> um, there's nothing better than taking here because, well, he has to defend with speed, and he can't live with your knight here, clearly. Uh, so bishop takes five is the only move. He takes a fire, he's going to miss this bishop, and uh, this nice square bishop. This bishop is miserable. Um, if you compare minor pieces, which is a useful exercise when you are evaluating his activity, comparing the activity of minor pieces is kind of crucial. It gives you a good idea of who is, who is, who has the initiative, who is better overall. <laughs> um, so clearly, yeah. Bet a six, castle, a five, bishop d three, queen d seven, f four, knight c six, he plays greater to this point, and queen d five, he could have gone for queen g two, which was fine. I don't know, sorry, uh, queen, huh? sorry, uh, queen, queen, G, uh, queen g four, queen g two, oh. queen g four, <laughs> uh, uh, but queen five is perfect. You have total control over the light squares and over the finger. <laughs> um, what is this? Castle? Question about it. Queen f3, you're going for the attack. And he plays an idea, kind of desperate, but he wants to go for e6 and get something going, I guess. He's, he's very limited. This was a frustrating <laughs> game because I, I had such an insane lead. Like, even here, white is just, like, a hundred times better, I feel. And yeah. I think I either draw the game or lose the game, I think. Because I, I remember having an, a really good head start here and then somehow not being able to to pull the trigger at the end. Yeah, it ended in a draw. Mm. Uh, but it should, yeah. be, it should be an easy win. <laughs> yeah, there were lots of adventure mm. <laughs> in this game. Uh, you were better overall uh, all along the game, but uh, well, it's it's a very instructive game. I really liked it because there's just a lot, a lot of work to do here, and and it does. It was a very interesting game. Uh, it's not boring. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> just a lot, lot to look, to look at. Um, Night the egg is off. I mean. If you really have to go 98 just to play six, something went very wrong, very early because we are more uh, a team. <laughs> uh, now you play 92, which is fine. I mean, it, it doesn't let the advantage go uh, your skill much better. But you still have some work to do with your pieces here. This field is doing nothing. Um, we will play in like group e1, group e1, and best, the best moves are the ones that, well, they strengthen your position and they also kind of put a lot of pieces for your opponent. I mean, uh, after something in group e1, e6 is not possible because this power and this is will be handy. And it's really difficult to to think of what black should do at this point. <laughs> uh, so with natural developing move to review where I think we have 92 is a very reasonable move. I mean I, I like the idea of this transfer to H5 uh, and the idea of finishing him off with strong attack on the king side. Uh, but rook one or rook one bring another piece to uh, to the trial so it has to be preserved. Uh, he played his seat. Um, here would shoot. What do you think you should play? <clears throat> Sorry, did you say what 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 yeah. what should I play? Yeah. I'm 
trying to remember what I sure. what I did yeah. play. <laughs> um, my guess is that I took uh, F takes E six. I think that's what I played. Um, yeah, I must have. I must have taken. But yeah, you have to, you have to okay. Uh, I'm happy to feel about it now. Well, considering that I think the theme of today's lesson is again kind of about releasing tension, um, it's probably not great. Um, I I liked it for a couple of reasons. I mean, I know that we actually we let him get rid of his double his double pawns, but I also get rid of my double pawn, and I thought. I thought it would let me, you know, free my queen to go to h5, um, and that I thought I thought I, I thought I could get and and plus if if you took with the pawn like I still have this diagonal, after that uh, kind of pin on the king I thought that was all good, so yeah that was my thinking. Um, if I were to look for a different move, well I have to move my queen. Um, I guess I could consider. The thing is, like, I didn't know what else to do other than taking, because like the pawn's going to fall, no matter what. So I guess I could go to d three and um, try to do something like this, but I, yeah, that's a good thing. I just wasn't sure. I mean, I'm I'm so materialistic, and <laughs> <laughs> but he's not yet into hit this pawn. I mean, these triple pawns are well, they very this bitch. So I don't think he's going to take here <laughs> anytime soon. And you can also get it back if you want. After queen d3, he takes f5. You can play knight g3 right here and then. Uh, take. Oh damn! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. That's worst case scenario. You can also leave this pawn here and and it's even debatable. <laughs> I mean, you it might it might be best to just leave this pawn here because it, it yeah, has, I get. Uh, I guess I could now the d6 square is a super weak. I guess I could easily target that. Yeah, the other one's going to fall. <laughs> he is just uh, that structure is it's not going to hold for for much longer. Um, mm. You took here, and is it, you said today is about um, releasing tension. It's more about the activity of the minor piece. Uh, in your last game, uh, your opponent had the opportunity to to basically cancel your right square bishop and your rook on a one by extension, um, and now your opponent is facing a similar challenge here. And this this bishop on g seven is awful. This is as bad as a bishop <laughs> he can get. Um, this knight on b eight is. To write home about. Uh, and your mind of this is are great. I mean, your this bishop is a giant. You're also going to play knight to three, knight five. Uh, he has a lot of trouble with this miserable <laughs> minor pieces, especially the bishop. I mean, this bishop is he's really not going anywhere. Uh, if he doesn't get to play f five at some point. This bishop is not going to be part of the game at all. Uh, F takes e6 is not a bad move. Uh, you are still a lot better because this these pawns are going to be very weak either way. Uh, and your pieces are still going to be better. But now he can play a five, and this bishop is alive. He's suddenly alive and has some kind of counterplay. If you went for queen d3. These pieces are going nowhere. And you have a clear cut plan here. You can play rook b1. You can go for knight g3, knight 5 And something really bad is going to happen <laughs> very soon. You can, you can move a finger here. Uh, for example, d5. Let's say he wants to do the same to your b Now you can even choose. I guess C4 is strong because the pawn is thin and 
But even knight g3, knight h5 is still possible. Maybe you can go for c3, bishop c2, and the threat takes his seat. As long as, as he doesn't have e5 and doesn't get his front center, which that doesn't seem possible. Uh, if pawn on d5 is going to be very weak, then to go e5. Uh, but not control play here and you. You do have a lot of ways of improving your pieces further, and this bishop is just out. Uh, he's not going to go anywhere. I mean, if he wants to put it back into play, he has to play rook e8, bishop played. But it's unrealistic. This king is going to be, he's going to be still alone very soon <laughs> if he, if Vlad wants to, to play all of his moves. I think the fight here, white knight by c4 is going to some material but even if he does go d5 i can i can't think of a reasonable plan for him uh, i think it was all about keeping this bishop trap uh, in, in the game he, he got it trapped away uh, to play f takes his seat f takes his seat queen h5 and now to play queen d5, who wants to exchange queens? I can understand it. Uh, it's not the best move because now you get this bishop there. Really. I, I, I hated this. So when he played queen b5, uh, um, I hated, I didn't want to trade queens at all. And I, I think I had to. This one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Nice. yeah. Uh, on the right side, you're still a lot better. I mean, the pounds are. Probably with one of the four, I guess. Um, he had to go for a five. I mean, this bishop, I mean, he got to free his bishop, it's time to do it. Uh, he's going to suffer here. I mean, these pawns are very weak, but they're not falling immediately. Suddenly, pieces are kind of doing something. Uh, yeah, he should. A couple of moves before he couldn't even dream of getting this piece out. Uh, and now he has a long diagonal for it. Uh, he has to take it and play a fight. Queen uh, fight is not so solid. Queen take, A takes B, knight B4, and you're keeping. D5, knight takes d5, you're up on up and you're a lot better. I like a 5 even, even here. Just for the sake of keeping this fish up. Mm -hmm. It's a walk. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I like d5 and it's quite clear. Rook f7, but clear that just to go for f5, just to activate this fish for you. Let's see. Rook 7, f5, that's the move. Uh, rook a5, f6, this is intermediate, like this. And now you could have put him away immediately. You could put this game away. You play 96, but that's a stronger move. I, it looks like I could just take the pawn. Yeah, this would be fine. I played, I played, mm -hmm. I played knight d6. Hmm. Yeah, you might yeah. have gone for this move. No, nah, I, I think I just played a little too quickly. I wasn't looking at yeah. that. You were four minutes at this point, so you might, you might have been a bit of a rush. Uh, Rook b7, knight f5, and again this bishop is visible. I mean, mm. he should have played f5 at some point because, well, he got the chance to do so, and now, now it's clear that the bishop is going to give up for the rest of the game. He played knight c5, which is actually a blunder. Um, now the move I didn't like, he played knight b7. This is the classical. Very good knight versus very bad bishop situation. 
So you really don't want to do this. Yeah. Uh, um, there's still a very, very strong move that, that finishes the game very quickly. Um, I see a fort, so bishop takes d5. Yeah, yeah. You, you are winning a second power and probably more. <laughs> you could do a four move. Yeah, bishop takes d5. Well, what's the thing to <laughs> But knight takes g7. Well, you're getting rid of the bishop. I don't know if you were thinking or, or simply fine at this point. Yes, I think that's all it was. I think um, we were down to four minutes and I was up a pawn and I thought I'll just, yeah, trade, you know, knight for bishop and simplify down. And I thought I could put yeah. pressure on the d5 pawn as well. Yeah, I, I like it because it's uh, it's good reasoning, but... Um, there were better moves, much better options, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, what I like about it is that it shows that simplification is not such an automatic match. Uh, just because you are found up, uh, it doesn't mean you have to go about changing all the pieces, especially the minor pieces. Rook endgames are very hard. <laughs> uh, they are very drawish. Even, even the found up, there are a lot of situations where the rooks uh, some generating some kind of activity and, and suddenly you can't even win that end game. <laughs> I don't know if this is the case, but you're, you're making your life very difficult here. Mm -hmm. Because if you get to, uh, to an end game with a pair of rooks for each side, and then after, after blind gets rid of, of this knight on top, of this bishop on b3, uh, then it's not an issue win at all. I mean, the rules are going to be active and your thing is a little bit cold. Uh, the pound uh, doesn't tell. I mean, it's, it's a, lot, a lot more difficult to, to impose that pound uh, if there are no minor pieces and there are rooks over the world. Um, this game kind of showed that because you actually got to uh, your end game very quickly, and now it's not clear that you're winning anymore. <laughs> uh, that one of the two is falling, otherwise you should play rook b1, but very passive. It, it's not indicated <laughs> in rook and game to play passive move, so c4, I five. Rook takes d2, rook takes d5, and um, now he gives us some kind of opportunity by not exchanging. There are a lot of theoretically drawn endgames where if you are upon that, and that's a problem. I mean, uh, the activity of the rooks is so important in these endgames that even being found down sometimes, this rook on b2 is very active and not after c takes d5, he could start killing checks and you really can't get rid of the checks. Uh, if you go king g3, just keep defending this one. Rook d2 and the pawn on d5 is going to fall very Rook 3, the idea of giving the check on d7 and capturing that pawn d7. It might be a draw, but d5 is just the easiest. I mean, that pawn is going to fall very soon. Pawn is falling. Out. And it's, hmm. it's a draw. Suddenly it's a draw. What happened? <laughs> what happened along the way? Uh, but what happened is that you exchanged a lot of minor pieces and rook endgames are very tricky. Uh, the activity of the rook is very important and these rooks have to be very active after the minor pieces where it's changed. Now he played rook e7, and finally it's your rooks that are very active. Uh, you went for rook b5, and then he got to give his check on e1, and to play rook b2. And yeah. Here. You could avoid this, you could have played h4, uh, you're going to defend this pawn by so rook g3, and 
And now you are with very real. Oh, why couldn't player. I just? Why do I need to play h4? Why can't I just play rook g3? Rook r, rook g3, check first. Yeah, and after rook king f7. So oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. So, so it's, it's just for a flight square then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then you're going to defend this pawn by means of rook g3, and you have your chance here. You are pan up, and your rooks are active, and you're, you're kind of stopping black immediate threat, so there's, there's hope of winning this. I mean, it's not easy at all. <laughs> uh, it's still a rook, a couple of rooks. And game and there there's a lot to there's a lot of work to do here. Uh, okay, so was, if if I can go back to this position, um uh, whoops. Uh oh. Uh oh. It kind of froze on me. Oh. Oh yeah, the the study is really slow for me right now. It's not uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay, there we go. Oh no, it's super slow though. Oh, oh, yeah. I know why. I know it won't let me um, because you have a setting that it won't let me move forward. I can only go backwards. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I have uh, even can you just go to the position where I I knight takes uh, g seven? Yeah. Or or right before that position. Yeah, the move right before. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, yeah. So this is pretty instructive for me. I mean, I kind of already knew this, but it should, I should, um, you know, this should help cement it in my knowledge that um, taking, you know, trading the, the knight for the bishop, we are help, we're giving black the opportunity to right away go straight into a, well, yeah, because this bishop can't go anywhere. So we're, we're actually allowing all of the minor pieces to be traded off for black and then for black to go into a rook and pawn endgame, which are, uh, can be very, very difficult as opposed to keeping the pieces on and enjoying the complexities, I guess, of the position. And we, we are a pawn up, but I guess being a pawn up with uh, the minor pieces on the board is probably more beneficial than if we just go to the rook and pawn endgame, right? It's easier to enforce it. Uh, well, there's such a big difference between this knight and that fire. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah. He should pay for it. He should pay for this reason. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, well, kind of um, I, I have a question then. What if this bishop was on d6? Uh, uh, well, he still leaves some weaknesses behind. I don't, I don't think to... Uh, like, like, okay, yeah. I'm well, like, if the king was here protecting this pawn, and the bishop, and this bishop was over here, um, do, yeah, this knight will still be better, I guess. Uh, so you, you, you still think it would be good to avoid trading in that case? Yeah, it's it's the pawns that that determine if the bishop is bad or good. Of course, uh, there's a big difference. If the bishop is on g7 or if the bishop. For example, in e5, where it is uh, defended by the pawn of seed, and it's a very good piece. Uh, the thing is, uh, in this concrete position, this bishop is miserable, and it's not easy to improve it. <laughs> uh, it takes a lot of time to take it to e5, where it would be ideally placed, I guess. Um, so at this point, uh, I don't see how this bishop is going to get out of here. Um, so trading it at this point, maybe it's such a great decision. Um, maybe in, a, in another situation, if you can trade this knight for a reshot, for example, if it's on this seat and it's going to go to e5, create threat, be a very good bishop, you can consider dropping it. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of far away. <laughs> uh, that is not getting there, so, uh, so at this point, I don't think. Capturing that bit of the, the, mm. the good idea. Uh, the other things are kind of hypothetical. Uh, a lot moves away. I mean, <laughs> uh, so it's kind of difficult to to answer that 
if the district were only five years, it would be a great piece and it would be worth considering just changing it for the night before it happens. But it's so far away that um, it's not conceivable that Black is going to achieve that. Uh, at this point, your night is at this, and this bishop is sad, I guess. Uh, I think part of I'm my, sure. I think part of my concern too was that the bishop was going to free itself, and I, oh. I, I thought I might. Th this is my opportunity to take it, like now or never, you know. Uh, now you are uh, you're already seeing this bishop here. Well, no, I just thought I just thought I think it's just here. I wasn't sure what my game plan might be. I thought it's it's kind of out of reach now it's kind of a shame that he's getting to change this bishop very strong uh, but well uh, leaving aside the fact that you take here on the five uh the spot that doesn't exist yeah you might want to go for rook d1 or maybe a3 so that the knight takes b3 your power on a3 um and um, your general plan should be picking up very weak pawn, I guess. Uh, you might even bag it. <laughs> you might even take this pawn at this point. But yeah, at this point, this looks very <laughs> than I was was used. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so this was your concern that this bishop. Yeah. Quite yeah. It's it's many months away. I mean, it's Bishop F8. It can't go Bishop B6 because it's only hanging. If King H7, there are still things like three keeping here. So I don't think this Bishop is going to free himself mm. that easily. Uh, this pawn hanging on B5. Uh, there are a lot of nonsense that don't let this this Bishop. It can be a good piece. Uh, he's kind of liberating, well, because of what you, you were saying. Now he gets to play a, a, a rook and game. He's not off the hook. I mean, he's called for pound down. You might want to play a three here, contrary to the game, so that this rook doesn't get this so active. And then, yeah, you, you're going to go rook one. Uh, you are better, but. Uh, Kind of got, even if he's fallen down, uh, he should be losing. He should still be losing this. Uh, a lot of work lot still. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very difficult to, uh, to bring the point home <laughs> from this. Um, okay, uh, just one more game that I I analyzed here for you, uh, but it's kind of an abstract. I mean, I. Let's go to the diagram because it's yep. it's related to what we were talking about. At this point, you play f5. Oh, I'm just wondering. Um, I often I don't um, same side castle too often. I'm trying to. I'm curious what the opening was. Uh it was a cost here. Uh, e45, knight f3, knight c6, bishop d5, knight oh, c7. Okay. Oh, okay. The structure changed. Oh yeah. A lot. Oh yeah. It was yeah. very strange. Yeah. Uh, at some point, it became some sort of. Yeah, event. I always. Yeah, yeah, I always. Um, castle kingside against a cozio. Yeah. Looks like a Benoni. <laughs> it's very strange. Uh, so now you played f five. Uh, well, this is related to what we were talking about. Uh, This knight on g6 is not a great piece. It doesn't have any prospects. Kind of, it, it is very limited by your Yeah, own. yeah. I can see that I'm making, giving him the perfect okay. outpost. I can see that now. Yeah. Um, but I'm actually surprised. This is only move 18, and I can see I only have three minutes 59 seconds after I make this move. 
I burned yeah. I burned a lot of time somehow. Yes, it was. Well, no. Three and a half minutes. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Yeah, you were very low on time, this one. Yeah, a five kind of loosens all that person. Give him this very, very strong outcome. Um, also, the other of his pieces are. I think I was, I think I might have been planning knight g3 to h5. Yeah, well, that's a very good idea. Uh, now you are, you have interesting here, so b3 might be a good idea. And then, yeah, you have to, you have to wait until you really can make push here on the center. But at this point, this part gives you a very pleasant space advantage. I mean, he's uh, his pieces are very limited by this pound, especially this knight on g6. Is, this is a very bad piece because it doesn't have any prospects. I mean, where can he go? He can play 97 and, and just be as bad as it was. <laughs> um, uh, Vuk, Vuk f3 seems like it might be a, an option here. Yeah, you can start bringing all your pieces to the king side and it has to be worrying for him. Uh, for example, there's a technique when you don't know what to do and you have a good position, but you want to improve it further, and, but you can't can keep with the right plan. Uh, Aga talks about trying to improve your work piece. Uh, Rawson also talks about this. He says that you have to talk to your pieces. <laughs> um, ask where do you want to be? Uh, Where do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, that's what you tell <laughs> These missions are reasonably happy. This knight, maybe that's a better mission. I mean, he's kind of passive on E2, and he was on his way to somewhere after he played knight E2. I mean, you didn't take this knight from away from C3, just you leave it on E2. You can play the same knight G3 and have to come. Rook e8, knight g3, and what is knight is going places? Go to f5, you can go to h5. Incidentally, put in the, the only active piece uh, the black owns, but besides this rook on e8. Uh, this knight is really bad. This bishop is not well placed on b7 for similar reasons. I mean, we saw, we saw something similar in, in the first game where the bishop was. Uh, hitting a concrete wall <laughs> on d5. Uh, so he might have, he might need to spend a tempo on bishop c8, bringing back to this diagonal, which is rather sad. <laughs> uh, so with very natural move, you will do it fine here. And always thinking of restricting your your opponent's piece activity. This knight on g6 deserves to be punished, punished for for putting things up in such a position. You can play around, here you can play around it and, and just leave it here. After a five, where he gets, kind of gets everything he wants. Now all of the pieces are reasonably well. Yeah, played. especially my light squared bishop, that's pathetic. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you see the structure, this is, this is more, <laughs> Uh, but usually this pawn is on g6. Mm. So for the B, for this square on e5, you kind of get an uh, And here, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. So you are getting nothing in exchange for this out. Uh, queen d2, well, it ended quickly because of blunder. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, well, the important and structural moment. A <laughs> uh, five gave him the opportunity to activate these two pieces. Sometimes the best policy is just to restrict your opponent's pieces and not let them go to where they really want to be. Um, I think uh, these three games kind of show that um, in all three games, well, in the first game, you were on the 
on the wrong side of, <laughs> of this problematic. Um, on the other two, you have the opportunity if the opponent faces in very bad positions, uh, you kind of set them free. Um, it's something to look to look at. Um, thinking in terms of how good pieces are, what are their prospects, uh, where would they like to be, as well as your uh, well, it often leads you to the right idea. Uh, if in the last game you were looking at that piece of, on G7, uh, you might have discovered that it was a very miserable piece and uh, the black didn't really know what to do about it. <laughs> he was practically laying a piece down. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I do recognize that the, the, my opponent's pieces are, are bad. But I think, yeah, I'm not punishing it enough. I'm <laughs> well, it, it, uh, when I was going through your games, it was, uh, it was almost casual, but uh, there were a couple of games that we played almost consecutively. And uh, it, they were these games, and, and they all had some kind of connection in that aspect. That's why I want to see this today. <laughs> um, well, I leave you a uh, commented game by Kappa Blank here. Okay, in, in the, it's on, on in, in the, the lesson other. study? Yeah. Let me just uh, get to that. Okay. Winter Kappa Blanca, okay. Yeah. And this is, I guess, related. Um, okay, it looks like the bishop on... Well, okay. Yeah, this is an, this is a must, <laughs> this is a must, and <laughs> you have to know this game. Uh, it's a huge classic, it, it features a lot of books. Uh, I don't know if you have the time, we can, we can go through it, or I don't know if... Don't yeah, I've got the time, but we did, we did hit our hour mark. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. so um, okay. I, I could look at this through uh, myself, or we could save it for next week. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you can have a look at it. It's a good complement, I guess, of, the, of today's lesson because it's a very clear game. Orlanka did everything just to... He kind of... Uh, kind of put a piece of opponent as an objective, like he said, you're not going to play anymore. <laughs> mm. You're going to save this piece for the next game because it's not going to play. <laughs> I believe. Well, as easily as he was used to doing it. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, thank, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you again very much. Um, I kind of like how each week it's it's kind of all the, we're focusing on a different theme, um, so that's very helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you again next week. Okay. Yeah. Thanks I again, really Alessandro. Thank you. I hope I can. I can make it work. Yeah, um, yeah. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. We can, but we can adjust oh. it again next week. Okay. Thank you again. Oh. See you. Okay, bye. Bye.